Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our weekly thoughts series, if you even want to call it a series. It's not like we're going anywhere in particular. I'm just giving you my random thoughts as they happen throughout the week. It's been a little bit over a week since I've uploaded one, and I apologize for the delay. Um, I would say there's been a lot going on, but if I'm just being real with you guys, I just have not had that on the top of my priority list over the last couple of weeks. And so, uh, but now that things have kind of settled down, now that, you know, things are kind of falling into place, um, hopefully we can get these pumping out consistently on a weekly basis. Uh, you know, I still won't select a certain day because, you know, if I do that, then I'm going to end up getting really mad at myself if I don't follow that day. So once per week, I try to upload something about um, what's been on my mind that week or one of the thoughts that's been on my mind that week. It's possible that I have multiple and then I push them on from week to week, but who knows? But this weekly thought is one that if, if I if if I got an offer today to write a book, if some publisher came to me and was like, we want you to write a book, this topic today would probably be the one that I would talk about as much as I've been thinking about it. Uh, and that's the idea of what I'm calling structure. Um, I don't really have a title for this. Uh, there's no really clever title, but I guess structure would be the best one to use. Um, and it kind of encompasses three ideas. One is structure, the structure itself. Two is deconstruction. And three is reconstruction. And I know that when people typically hear those words, they're like, oh my gosh, this guy's he's woke and progressive and all that stuff, which if you know me, you know that I hate labels. Um, but if you want to call me that, then I, I don't even care. Like at this point, I just, I don't care. If you want to label me as something, um, then feel free. Uh, it won't hurt my feelings. Um, cause anyways, I'll, <laughs> I'll save those thoughts for another day, uh, on labels. But for this analogy that I want to play off of, um, either you saw it on my thumbnail or I'll put a picture right here. You see where my hand's at? There's going to be a cool little graphic here of a house. Uh, I want you to think of a house, though. Um, and when I say a house, I mean, you can picture that however you'd like. Any picture of a house would work. It doesn't have to be a tiny one like this. But it could be any kind of house. And, and pretend like you bought that house today. It's a fresh house. You just bought it. However, you haven't seen the inside of it yet. Only thing you've seen is the outside. The outside looks to be pretty pristine and in pretty good shape, but you don't really know what's on the inside. And so typically, the first thing that you would do in a new house is you would take a tour. You would, you would go inside and you would look around to see, okay, what is good? What is bad? What needs improvements? What can stay as it is? What needs to be rebuilt? What needs to be just totally demolished and, and taken out of the house completely? And, and and so what is the state of this structure? And and obviously when I'm saying this, by the way, I'm using this as a metaphor. So kind of follow me a little bit. I'm you, you'll catch on, but let's just use this metaphor and uh, of a house. When you go from room to room, you know you may go let's say first to the dining room, and the dining room seems to be in pretty decent shape. You know, the walls seem to be okay. Maybe there's a few little paint peels, but overall it's a, it's a pretty good room. You go into the kitchen, it, it's okay. You know, there's some cabinet pieces that are falling off and maybe the paint is the wrong color. Uh, the refrigerator has a smell to it that needs to be fixed. Uh, let's say that you go to the living room and the floor is ripped up. Uh, the carpet is, is teared apart or torn apart uh, the couches don't match. They're like, where's one couch that's red? The other one is like a pink. It just doesn't work. Um, then you go upstairs, and and suddenly your upstairs is just totally demolished. Like everything is just in horrible, horrible condition. However, when you looked outside, you noticed that the foundation was good. The outside was good, and the foundation that it sat on is good. Typically, with a house like that, the first thing that you want to do is start tearing away anything that's bad. So for the broken cabinets, you want to take all the cabinets out so that they can be replaced, right? 
or with a refrigerator. Maybe the, you can't get the smell out. Maybe you can. Maybe it can be buffed out. With the couches, you're going to want to remove one of the couches and replace it with a matching couch. F fix the floors. And then upstairs, you're going to want to totally remodel the whole upstairs. The reason why I'm wanting you to have this picture is I want you to think about your beliefs that way. Uh, and I'm not talking about just biblical beliefs, although that is the primary topic as we typically talk about the Bible here. But think about it philosophically. In, philo in philosophy, there are, there are many different ways to look at how you think about things. So you know, let me just give you a, a few examples. These aren't all of them, but these are the, the big ones. Uh, one is axiology. Axiology is the study of the value of something. Like how how valuable is the thing that that you're thinking about? Um, maybe it's metaphysical. Like is the is there some fundamental nature in the thing that you, that you see? Is it real? Is it actually physically real? Uh, epistemology. Epistemology is is how do you know that you know? It's a study in nature of your knowledge. Like, how do you know that what you know is actually true? Or how do you know that what you know is actually what you know? Then there's ethics. How do you know that what you believe is right or wrong ethically or morally? Think about aesthetics. Is Does what you have, is it, does it have a sense of beauty to it or a sense of taste to it? Think about logic. Does what you believe is it logical, or does it contain fallacies that does that don't really support your argument? That that everything that you're using to support your argument actually contradicts any any type of proof that would prove your argument to be true. It's a fallacy, or is it not a fallacy? Uh, does it pertain to politics at all? Pol whether we like it or not, politics is a type of philosophy. It's not just a a system. It's a po it's a philosophy. It's how we think about government. Does what you believe about the state of government or the state of government's function in the world? Uh, what do you believe about that, and why do you believe that? And the last example is history. Does what you believe about history is that is that good? Is that right? So the way that you can kind of I mean, there's many different what like there's theology as well. Do you? Do you believe what is true about God? You know, there, there's so many different rabbits that you can chase when um, examining your mind. But the first thing that you have to do before you even talk about deconstruction and reconstruction is the actual structure itself. Is the structure that you are currently in, living in, does it actually work? Is it good? And here's the reality, just to kind of give you a little bit of a hint. All of us, no, none of us have a perfect structure. We may like to think so sometimes, but if we go from room to room and we fix everything up, and then suddenly we're like, you know what, I'm going to take another tour of the house, we're going to find something else that needs to be improved. And as we continue the cycle of constantly touring our house, we're going to see that there's little things that could be improved and polished and, and maybe touch up the paint, maybe, you know... Um, polish the furniture to make it even more vibrant. Uh, there, there's ways that we can always improve. So before you even even move on to the next two things I'm about to say, look at your structure. If you have to, take notes of it. For me, what, what I did is I listened to people who believe things differently than I did, and that is what actually showed me if what I believe actually has a foundation or if it doesn't. Um because I listen to people, because for me, I want to listen to the best and most prominent voice on the opposite spectrum of what I believe. Because if I can hear a good argument for the other side, it'll help me to make a decision of whether that's actually a good argument or not. Like if this is the best voice that you have epistemologically on my theology, then I, either his, his, either his or her argument is good and, and, contradicts my own, but in a good way that causes me to change my mind, or it doesn't work for me. And so that's what you need to do is you need to, to figure out what you believe, why you believe it, how you believe it, <coughs> excuse me, the nature of what you believe, and see if it holds up. And, and if all else fails, look at your foundation. If you need to find some place to start, look at your foundation. 
Is what your house built on good? <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Choking on air here. Um, but it, is what your house sitting on, is that good? So for example, in theology, what would be the foundation of our theology? Jesus. Jesus is the chief cornerstone of what we believe. Does our theology stand firm apart from Jesus? I would say no. Personally, I would say no. Does yours, if we put Jesus as the foundation, is that a strong foundation that can hold our house? I would say yes. That's the, that's the first place to start. Is Jesus your foundation? If not, then maybe that's what needs to be worked on. So after you've kind of gotten an idea of what your structure is, then you can start to think about what needs to go, what, what has to leave. And this is a painful process because what ends up happening sometimes is as you start to tear things down and deconstruct, sometimes when you tear, let's, for example, let's say you tear your cabinet from your wall, you rip it out of the wall that's broken, and suddenly you see that it rips the paint off too. The paint was good, but now you see that behind the cabinet is, is, is some paint that needs to be repiled. Like you're, you're going to find some things through your deconstruction, and it can be painful. And sometimes ripping out the cabinets is a painful process because you were so in love with those cabinets. I hope, I, I hope by now you guys are catching the metaphor. But let, let me just give a practical example. Let's say the, theologically speaking, you have based your entire theology on your parents' theology, for example. And your parents are not willing to go on this journey with you. Like they're, they're dead set on what they believe. But for you, you realize that what they believe and what they have taught you doesn't work for you. And it doesn't seem to, it doesn't seem to have a great, it, it really doesn't work for your house. When you walk in that room, that room looks really bad and, and you know that something needs to be done. That process can be painful. For some people, maybe it means like, like if I'm being honest with you, and this is something that you're gonna have like it's different for every context, but for some people, deconstruction may mean their family disowning them, or not. Well, disowning's a strong word. Maybe for some that's what it's led to, but when I mean disown is like they they distance themselves from you, or maybe listen for me. You know you know what I heard not from my parents, but like from people that I was close to outside of my family. When I deconstructed, you know what I heard. Matt, you need to read your Bible more. Matt, I think I think you're starting to dabble in some heresy. And and I'm starting to get disassociated by disassociated with other people because I'm deconstructing something that I realized didn't work for me. And um and that and that can be painful. It can be really painful because ultimately what I'm doing is I'm wanting to find the best possible way to structure my life on this foundation that I'm on, which is Jesus. I want my house to look as good as it can. I don't want to settle for something mediocre. I want it to be pristine, not perfect. I want it to be good. I want to look at my life and I want to see the things that I believe and know that what I believe has a firm foundation first and foremost, but also it is built on something good. The whole structure is goodness and love, and it, and it lines up with the character of God. It's not just something that I'm believing because everyone else believes it. You know what I'm saying? Because everyone else may have a really bad living room, and you realize that this living room just isn't cutting it. You've been getting, you've been living in the same living room as everybody else, and everybody else's living room doesn't look that great. They got some shag carpet that needs to go. They got a clown painting that's stuck to the wall that they got to rip out. You know what I'm saying? Like This is a reference to the office for those who didn't catch on. Um... I'm a, if you know me, you know that I love The Office. It's a little inside joke for those who, who love The Office. Um, but anyways, deconstruction can be really painful for some more than others. For some, maybe you don't have to deconstruct that much. You realize that what your structure is is actually a pretty good start. And I think for a lot of you, if you really think about it, your structure probably isn't as bad as you might think it is. Maybe for some, it may be worse than you think it is. Um but overall, deconstruction is a, it's not easy, and I don't recommend doing it alone. Find some other people who are wrestling with you 
are will or or who are willing to go on this journey with you, even if they disagree with where you go, but they're willing to go on the journey with you, find those people that they can listen to you, they can hear you out, and they can help you to deconstruct in a healthy way, not in a way that rips down your entire house, not not in a way that tears away your foundation that's actually good, but in a way that actually leaves something to be rebuilt on or to be re- reconstructed. Which brings me to the idea of reconstruction. I know this video is a little bit longer, but this is some, this is why I said this is a book. This, we got a book here. Uh, if should that door ever open down the road, reconstruction is something that isn't always going to happen. So you may deconstruct something, and the thing that you deconstructed just needs to stay gone. Like there, there needs to be nothing put in its place. It just needed to be removed. Like there's some. Like it just needed to be totally removed. And, well, I, I won't name any examples. I about named an example for myself, but if I name examples, then it may actually defeat the whole purpose of what I'm doing here. Um, but let's just say that you walk, you you remove one of the couches that didn't match, and now you have this space where another couch could fit. So you're going to go find a couch that matches and that looks good, right? Or maybe you see that there is an area that, just needs something put in it. Like you have an empty room that needs furnishing. So you're going to, for one, you're going to reconstruct the room to make it look good, but you're also going to fill it with something that it never had before. But the whole idea of reconstruction is going back through your home and putting things back in their proper place and the things that have been torn down, replacing them with things that are good and that are new and that are, that are fresh and that are ultimately going to be great for your house. And that's what reconstruction is in a nutshell. Is and, and reconstruction is a lot easier than deconstruction. Deconstruction it's it's really painful to rip things out. It's not as painful to reconstruct, but sometimes that can be painful too because the things that you begin to reconstruct may be against what other people like. Like you may choose a color of your carpet that other people may hate. You may put a couch in your house that people just think is the most disgusting thing ever. You may add new cabinets and people are like, man, I I hate that you used used marble instead of, you know, wood for your countertops. You know what I'm saying? Like there's so many different uh, groups of people that may criticize you, but ultimately reconstruction, deconstruction, all, all this is all up to you because this is your house. I mean, it's it's his house. It's God's house. But ultimately, it is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells within your temple. And I believe this. Ho- you could use this house metaphor and turn it into temple if you want. I just think that house is something that all of us can relate to. But for me, I'm wanting to house something for God to where every time that me and God meet in my house, I know that I'm meeting in a room that has been put up to the best of my ability. Because sometimes God's the one who's tearing some of that stuff out for me. And and here's the thing too. Let me say this. For deconstruction, it may look different in your context than somebody else. Some of us live in different contexts where certain things work with us, with me in Columbia, South Carolina, that don't work for you in, you know, let's say Montana or California or New York or Maine or Florida or Kentucky. So you have to kind of make this decision on your own. You can't let other people make this decision. But here's here's what you need to do, though. You need to make sure of something. You need to make sure that it lines up with the historical narrative of the Bible. When I, what I mean by that is don't not your theology. Don't base everything on what you have interpreted from the Bible, but find the original conversation that's being had and see if what you believe lines up with that original conversation. I think the Bible is a great way to do that. Also, and the most important thing, is make sure it lines up with who Jesus is. Because Jesus, for one, is the Word, but also Jesus is our foundation. A lot of people worship the Bible more than they worship Jesus. The Bible is the Word of God. It It is the written Word of God. It was written by man, inspired by God. But Jesus is the Messiah. He is the Son of God who is our rabbi. He is who we follow. He is how we interpret everything. 
I once heard someone say that Jesus is perfect theology. If you ever, if you, if you have to tear down your entire house, know that your foundation is Jesus, and, and that's a great place to start. Because for some of you, maybe it takes tearing down nearly your entire house. But if you can start from the place of Jesus, then that's all that you really need. So anyways, I wanted to, uh, I guess I'll just end it there. Um, there's so much more that can be said, and we may have more conversation on this. Maybe next time we talk about this, I'll bring in another voice who can kind of help speak to this. Um, I also talked with Marty Solomon a little bit on this on the Dream Podcast. So if you go to Dream Church, uh, then you'll see that. Or you can go to dreamcolumbia.com and find the um, the podcast where I spoke with Marty Solomon. We talked about deconstruction a little bit. Uh, it wasn't the whole conversation, but we did talk about it some. And he gives some great insights as well. So I'll, I'll make sure to link that as well uh, here. It'll be to our uh, website, but you can also find it on Spotify. Um, but yeah, so it, but if you have any questions about this or any questions about deconstruction, um, please speak with somebody. If you need to reach out to me, you can reach out to me at facebook.com slash Matthew Brown Ministries, or you can leave a comment below, um, or just find somebody that you can talk to that you know will listen to you. Don't go to people that you know are going to just totally scold you for looking at your structure and seeing how healthy it is. Go to people that you know are going to walk with you through this. Because here's the thing. All of us want to believe something about the Bible and about God and about life. We have this innate belief about God. And and some of us, we know that what we've been handed is wrong or not good. We just are scared to actually step out and do something about it. Because I was scared. Because you know that the moment that you step out against that thing is the moment that you are essentially challenging everything that you've been handed. And it, it, it is tough. It is not easy at all. But the reality is, is most of us, when I'm saying these ideas on structure, most of us know what our structure is like. We know what needs to go. It's just a matter of actually starting to do that. And it, it, is, it has been the most painful thing I've had to go through in my life. But at the same time, it has been the most liberating thing. I, I am so much more in love with Jesus now than I was when I thought I couldn't love him more. And the reason is, is because now I see Jesus, in my opinion, the way that I think that I always should have seen him. But there were some presuppositions and there were some some traditions that I were I was handed that really weren't the most helpful things and it helped me ha- or it not really helped me but it uh it led me to believe things about God that weren't necessarily true like things about I thought that that God was always mad at me for example because of things that I've done but now that I realize that he loves me like really loves me not not just tolerates me like I was taught but he really loves me. That, that, that has been liberating for me. And so, again, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, I'll leave the conversation here. At, like, I'll leave it. It's going to be an open-ended conversation because there's a million things that can be said on this. And if you're watching this down the road and I had, for some reason, wrote a book on this idea, then it'll be in the description. It'll ha- I'll have a link to that. But uh, it that that's nothing anytime soon. I want to write a book on this idea. I just don't feel like right now is the time to do so. Um, as I'm still kind of working through it. But if a publisher ever comes to me and is like, "We want you to write a book," then there you go. But I, again, I, at the time that I'm making this video, I doubt that's going to happen anytime soon. Um, worst case, I'll public, I'll self publish it, um, and we'll, we'll figure something out. But anyways, I'm I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm totally. This may not even happen. Who knows? Lord may be like, nah, you're not going to do that. You're going to just leave this video as is and, and you know, deal with it on a personal level. Who knows? Anyways, I'm rambling now. Um, that's it for today's weekly thoughts. Um, and yeah, make sure to go follow uh, my page at Matthew Brown or Facebook.com slash Matthew Brown Ministries. Subscribe down below here to the YouTube channel. And turn on notifications so that you can see every time that I upload a video. Um, Check out the other videos on the channel. We have some other thoughts of the week that I've been going through. Um, And yeah, I'll see you guys next week. 
and hope you guys have a great rest of your day.